Hi everyone, hello. Welcome, I'm Todd Nock. I'm a professional comic book artist. Easier for me to do than for me to say, apparently. So, hi, welcome. Um, it's time for another Post-it Pop Art Challenge here. Doing these during the coronavirus stay at home season. So hopefully everyone's staying safe, staying well, and hopefully you're keeping your spirits up. Um, and uh, as we kind of roll through this weird time in the world, not just in the US, but across the whole world. So um, I wanna say thank you for everyone for joining me, joining me for these uh, live streams. Thank you so much, I appreciate your support. So today um, we're doing uh, the number three uh, voted on character on my Twitter poll as I had four different uh, DC Comics superhero teams, Justice League, Just Justice Society, The Outsiders, and Doom Patrol. Justice League came in first place. Just Justice Society came in second place. Hopefully you saw those Hawkman and Stargirl videos respectively. So today is the Doom Patrol. Uh, yeah, Doom Patrol. Doom Patrol got the number three spot. So I'm going to draw Robot Man on this gray post-it. I thought of doing orange, but I just did orange for Hawkman. I think gray would really pr play well to that kind of gritty Grant Morrison era uh, Robot Man. So uh, when Grant Morrison was writing Doom Patrol. So... Uh, feel free to draw along. You don't have to draw on a post-it note. If you don't have post-it notes, that's okay. Draw on whatever you have. Your sketchbook, construction paper, anything that's appropriate to draw on. Use whatever tools you have handy. You don't have to use the same tools I'm using. But hopefully the, my tips and tricks will hopefully um, help you with your art in some way. At the very least, hopefully have fun. So let's flip the camera around. Let's get to drawing. Just replug into the rig here. How's everybody doing today? Readjust the light. There we go. Sorry for shaking everything around. So, going to start with, got my 3 inch by 3 inch post-it note here. Got my favorite mechanical pencil, the Uni Kuratoga pencil, 0.3 lead, HB lead, HB softness. What do you do when you make a mistake while drawing or inking? Well, while I'm drawing with a pencil, I will use an eraser to make my mistake, correct my mistake. Um, if I'm inking, Depends on what I'm what what I'm doing. If it's for actual comic book art that goes to print, I'll just use whiteout and clean up that area that might have been the mistake, or I'll find a way to work that mistake into the ink. So let's see. We're gonna do a three quarter view here because I really want to get a good feel of Robot Man's jaw. Kind of putting him just a little left to center, so we have a little sh more shoulder here because I want to draw on those big chunky. 1990s shoulder pads, early 1990s shoulder pads. So I want to figure out the front of his face here, his jaw to his ear, ear, ear type apparatus. I did pull up some reference here on, on the Google so I could get aspects of him correctly. I'm not doing a redraw of the reference, I am just doing, I'm just looking at it so I can see what are the elements of of Robot Man. In fact, I'll show you the reference I'm using and you'll see how different I'm going here. So I'm using this shot of, of, of uh, Robot Man. I believe that's Richard Case's artwork. So shout out to Richard Case. And uh, hopefully I got that right. Um, if that's a different artist, I apologize to Richard and the actual artist of that time. Um, so I, uh, as you can see, my, my p positioning and pose of Robot Man is completely different. But I just need to know what are the elements of his design because he's had several different designs. So he's got this, this brow. <laughs> Looks like someone has dropped some news here into my uh, live stream. Yes, today is my birthday. Today we are celebrating my birthday. Um, stay at home style. So uh, yes, thank you so much. Thank you so much, everybody. It's an honor to get to share my birthday morning with you. It's 9 a.m. here on the on the West Coast. So just getting my day started and I'm getting it started with you. So thank you. Thanks for, for that, everybody. 
And to the person who broke the news, thank you for outing my birthday. And I mean that sincerely. It's very, very sweet of you. Thank you. Yep, I'm an April baby. Almost an April Fool's baby. So, it was a close call there. So I'm just sculpting out each chunk of Robot Man, and he's very chunky. I mean, he's, he's, you know how I talk about the planes of the face, the angles? This guy is super angular, which can make it really fun, because I'm not really thinking about the organic shape of a face, though that is somewhat into play, but then I can just really angle it up and exaggerate it. You just joined, so someone fill you in. Well, first, thank you for being here. I'm doing my post-it pop art live stream where I draw a comic, but mostly oftentimes comic book characters, sometimes cartoon characters, maybe other type characters for future live streams on a post-it note here during this coronavirus stay at home time. People are invited to draw along or just hang out and watch. But that's uh, what's going on. And I'm drawing Robot Man from Doom Patrol. So really taking advantage of how his jaw here, it's like his jaw and mouth are not quite human because it hinges in a very skull-like way. Our hinge is hidden underneath muscle and skin and tissue and tendon and ligaments so, um, and other scientific type biological words. So it's like drawing a skull in a very robotic graphic shape. It's got dark around the eyes here. And the eyes glow red. This guy, by the Grant Morrison era, Robot Man got pretty, pretty bulky. He became a very bulky robot. And he wore a leather jacket with shoulder pads, which I thought was a really fun, weird idea. So we're going to put a big, let's see, figure out, we need to finish figuring out where those shoulders are. And now I'm putting in the collar here. Even though it's covering up part of his chin, I needed to know where that full, or his jaw, I wanted to know where that full jaw was so that when I put the collar over it, I know that everything underneath is fitting correctly. He's got these big, massive like segmented, almost like a big, almost like a corrugated tin, but imagine the corrugated tin is made out of, I don't know, steel. It's like these big rectangular chunks. And the other side of his jacket collar. And then we'll continue that shoulder pad. And these are huge shoulder pads. If you look up the Grant Morrison Doom Patrol, if you're not familiar with it, Robot Man his, his shoulder pads would rival cables from, from X-Force in many ways. I mean, the, these guys were the kings of the shoulder pads in the early days of shoulder pads on superheroes. Okay, now let's see. There are some bolts that run across the top of this uh, dome thingy. Yeah. And then he had some bolts that stuck off his brow. So kind of just to the outside of the eyes from what it looks like here, at my, looking at my ref, and they kind of angle. So I'm trying to get the right angle based on what I'm seeing in my reference. There's a ridge to this back part of his skull plate. And he had a little bit of furrow to his brow. He was able to furrow his brow a little bit. So I'm going to try to translate that to give him a, a gruff expression. Oh, and he had these antenna that stuck up off of his ear pieces. 
So if the ear is like over here, the other antenna would poke up right about there, I'd imagine. Pretty normal nose. A little bit of a ball at the end of the nose, it looked like. Kind of long nostrils. And he was a very gruff character. So, I'm going to make sure his, his mouth angles back down towards his jaw so it doesn't look like he's smiling. With his jaw, this plate kicking up, it would be easy for it to look like a smile. So the upper lip, I need to keep in mind, pull that straight across and down a little bit so that it conveys more of like a frown. And he is a metal texture. They used a lot of lights and darks in Doom Patrol there. So, in that time, so I'm going to want to utilize that too to really capture that that era's flavor, but in my own style. So he had a big dark shadow on his forehead. Put some little shadow indications for when I go to inks. Oh, and he also wore a tore up t-shirt too. But we won't be seeing any of that. A little shadow here on his chin. So that gets the pencil lines, the pencil sketch, conveyed enough for me to move into the inks. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with my black microns. I'm gonna use the 08 and the 0, what's well, 005? I'll keep that handy, but probably more 01. And I'll also have my zebra brush pen handy for the leathery texture of his jacket. So I'm going to start with, I like to start with whatever's most in the foreground and work my way backwards. So his collar that overlaps his jaw is most in the foreground, though technically his shoulder pad is. Um, I'm going to start with the collar. Just out of preference. It's not a rule that we have to start foreground to background. I just like to. I'm going to work on the segments there of his shoulder pads. Oftentimes for something like this, I would use my drafting tools, but because Doom Patrol was so gritty, um, I want to just do it uh, freehand. So it kind of has that more organic, sketchy, scratchy vibe to it. It's not so pristine and clean of a line that a drafting tool would give me. Um, I, want, I want a little bit of that, that gr gruff and grit. Some wrinkles there as the collar wraps around his, his neck and bunches up around his shoulders there. We'll fill in more blacks here in a little bit here where I would use an ellipse or circle template here on his ears. Just gonna do these freehand, so the, again, I'm maintaining that, that grittier line style. The Doom Patrol at this time, when Grant Morrison was writing the book, and I haven't read all of the series, I've just read some of the Grant Morrison comics, they were, it was a, it was definitely a grittier comic. It was weird. It was extra weird, weirder than it was previously. And, um, yeah, just really, really, um, just kind of had a, a bit of a darker edge to it. So I'm going to try to tap into that a little bit as best I can with my style here. So as I work my way around, I his this uh, this kind of metallic brow, keeping in mind that he could manipulate his brow a little bit um, to convey emotion. I want to try to work that in, breaking up the lines. A 
work in a little bit of that ridge so it really looks like a metal strap or um, beam that kind of runs across his forehead and up to the top of his head making his actual forehead a kind of a separate plate see I need to get these antennas finished antennae I should say is the plural of antenna one antenna many antennae I have really have to think about when I say the word antenna because if I say it real casually and I'm not thinking about the word, my wife says my Texas accent comes out. She always catches me whenever I say antenna. That's how I naturally say antenna, is antenna. Robot man, he's got antenna on his ear. And so she always giggles. There are certain words I say that still have the Texas accent. Antenna, pilla, you know, and not I sleep on a pilla. So even though I don't really have a Texas accent anymore, kind of lost it as a child, there are still certain words I say that have a bit of a Texas accent that come out and it's always fun. For, it's a game for my wife to catch them and uh, catch me when I say something with a, a t accidentally with a Texas accent, like certain words that are just ingrained in my brain as a Texas accent. So we got the back of his head. Y'all probably know far more about my Texas accent than you ever thought you would learn or even want to know. Now we're going to start to work on this draw. And this kind of makes it fun to draw Robot Man, is that his design is so weird, you don't often get to draw a character whose jaw is put together like this. Like, for me, this is what I geek out on. This is like, this is the fun thing. Oh my gosh, his jaw is so, so weird. You know, no one else has a, a jaw really quite like this. And I get to draw something so different than say drawing like Superman, you know, you're not going to draw Superman with a jaw hinged like that because he's not a robot. So, uh, so this is the kind of stuff that can really thrill me as an artist. It's like how different is this character's design from everyone else I draw and, and, and gives me a chance to play in a new or different or really weird or bizarre, bizarre way. So see, so um, I was, since I knew where the whole jawline was going to be right through there, because I sketched it in, I knew that when I drew inked his jaw to his to where the lines met up with his collar, that everything would fit. So everything, the the entire shape is believable. So this is why it's good to rough out the entire face, even though of the things you're not going to see, it's still good to know it's there because then you'll have more accuracy in the body parts fitting together. So that's why it's good to draw all the way through. Sketch it out even if you're not going to see it because you want that, that uh, mathematical equation. If I can use that, that analogy uh, very loosely. Um, it's the formula, you know? The formula. Got to put it all in there even though the, the viewer is not going to see it. I need, to, I need it there as a guideline to make sure that everything fits together as best as possible. All right, so uh, let's see. For all the big black spot areas, I'm gonna come in with my brush pen here in a moment, so I'll leave those for the time being. Been using the 08 micron here. Just beefing up some of the lines here a little bit. Get my contours a little, little more bold. A thicker line can, can, can move things to the foreground. So if I make this line on this collar a little bit thicker, it's going to give that illusion that it's closer to us. Also, a heavy black line can convey a shadow, like underneath his jaw uh, right there. So uh, these are things to think about when, with your line weight. What do you want in the foreground? Thicker lines can move things to the foreground. Thinner lines can move things to the background. So it's for to convey distance as well as convey um, shadow, light and shadow. 
Okay, now I think I had seen in my reference, he kind of has this, this weird, where did my reference go? Of the inside of his mouth. Yeah, there it is. He's kind of got this weird, is that a weird shape? Kind of like a, kind of tech shape inside. So we're just going to throw in a little tech right there inside of his mouth. Mostly shadowy, but just a little sense of the inside of his mouth, the, the robot circuitry interior. Okay, now for the zero 01 micron. My zero 08 wants to slide off the table. Stop that. All right, so let's, uh, now I can put in cleaner, crisper detail lines with this smaller tipped micron. Especially one that I like to use these for like noses, eyes, human, more human mouths. If it's a giant robot mouth, nah, don't need it. But for a human mouth, I might want cleaner lines around the lips. Robot man really doesn't have lips, so the point is moo. Bonus points from anyone who knows what uh, character and TV show I'm quoting there. The point is Moo. So we got his, the red of his eyes. Yes, he does kind of have a ridge mouth, exactly. And then we're going to put some black around him. <laughs> He's popping his collar robot swag. Yes, yes, I think he is the uh, the first robot to really have some serious swag. Joey from Friends. Yes, that is correct. Luke Benecase, you you are correct. The point is moo, like the opinion of a cow. It is moo. Well done. Enjoy your bonus points. They can be redeemed in the gift shop. How do, who, how do I pick the characters I draw for my streams? Well, uh, this week has been uh, DC week, Tuesday, or Tuesday through through um, Friday here. I'm drawing a different character from a different DC superhero team. Uh, so I started. I had a poll on Monday on Twitter with the four teams listed, and the team that got the most votes was the Tuesday character. And I kind of drew them in order that they ranked in the poll, so... Tuesday was Justice League, Wednesday was Justice Society, today, number three spot was Doom Patrol, and then tomorrow will be an Outsider, like from Batman and the Outsiders. Now I'll put a little, some little detail lines here across some of the planes of his face, kind of gritty up his robot tech a bit. So then I, from the teams that come in in the ranking, I then uh, pick based on... Um, on just which character do I think would be fun to draw? So, uh, do I have a favorite? Is there a character that would interest me? Um, these these are the some of the, the choices that I make. And then certain days, it's just, which character do I feel like drawing today? People are welcome to suggest characters. I just, I can't promise that I can uh, accommodate suggestions, but I definitely do um, do read the suggestions and consider the suggestions. In fact, um, it's interesting. Someone for, for the Justice Society once suggested Stargirl, but I already planned on drawing Stargirl. So their suggestion was already in line with what I had planned to do. So you just never know. We might be in sync. So now I'm starting to fill in some of those black areas. And just kind of grittying up the metal with these little tick marks. Trying to be very mindful about how I place them on here. Uh, little details like, lines like this should not just go in haphazardly. 
because then it makes the unless you it makes the character look like they they're all scuffed up. So unless you're planning on making them look like they're all scuffed up, you want it to go in the direction of whatever the element is that you're rendering here. So like with the chin, I want to I, I'm looking to convey that roundedness. It's a fade of light to dark. So these are the things to keep in mind when you're putting in little tiny detail lines like this. You want them to have a reason and purpose and it helps them look more uh, deliberate and um, conveys the, 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 the intention of what you're trying to illustrate here. Okay, let's see. Put a little here in the antenna. I did that one on purpose. Okay, now I have some larger chunky blacks up here. So I'm going to use my zebra brush pen. Not filling it in completely black because I want there to be some gritty lines in here. Just pulling around the arc of the head there, the forehead. Put some here on the back of the head. Maybe a little bit here around the studs, kind of a little shadow. Maybe these bolts here, like that. Let's see, just went to double. Ch oh, yeah, so he's got uh, a banded metal neck, kind of like Colossus. So we're gonna, oops, that's not the, this is double zero five, too thin, too thin. Zero eight, zero eight. So we do this, just around. That takes care of the neck. And now um, back to this zebra brush pen. Start to fill in some some black here for his uh, leather jacket. If you have a hard time rendering leather, uh, like a leather jacket, look up like a, uh, like a biker jacket and look at the shapes that it makes. And that can help you. I know it helps me when I have to draw leather jackets to how to kind of break up the wrinkles and stuff. Okay, so now I can take my kneaded art gum eraser here. And we can take out all these um, guidelines, these pencil lines, the graphite. It can go now, it served its purpose. Got to add some of my consistent, to maintain consistency, I want to put some of these little tick marks through there. So I'm just riding that curve to convey the, the, the roundedness of his skull. So 
Same thing with the back of his head here. Okay, now it's time for the Copic color. So, he's mostly orange. His, his robot shell is orange, so we're going to use different variations of orange and maybe some cool and warm grays here. Definitely some cool grays, maybe some warm grays too. So I'm going to start with a YR27. I'm using Copic sketch markers. Uh, you feel free to use whatever coloring tools you have on hand. So we're going to work dark to light. So I'm going to say that our light is coming from above here, maybe a little bit to our left. So every, everything on the opposite side of that will be the darker colors, and then we'll work our way to lighter colors as we move closer to that light area. So his brow would cast a shadow around his eyes. This part of his cheek bone. Bone is a term I'm using loosely here. Uh, so anything on the underneath, on the bottom side, and on our right hand side. It's probably going to get more of the darker color and then later shadow colors. A lot of dark color here underneath his chin. There onto the neck. Bottom of the chin. This is the, I think this is the very first time I've drawn, uh, no it's not, it's been a long, I, I did draw an issue of Teen Titans that was a, uh, during the, um, one of the Crisis storylines, I can't remember if it was Final Crisis or the Infinite Crisis, I think it was Infinite Crisis. Um, we did a Beast Boy spotlight issue. A lot of it was really focused around Beast Boy, and Beast Boy started in the Doom Patrol. That's where he got his 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 start. Uh, before Teen Titans, he was introduced in Doom Patrol, and um, so we had a lot of kind of flashbacks to his, the different era eras of the Doom Patrol. So I might have drawn this version of Robot Man once before, and it was in that issue. Uh, I'm fairly certain, um, but that was maybe. That was back in the mid 2000s, so it's been well over 10 years since I've drawn this this version of Robot Man, and that was probably one small panel that had that ver this version of Robot Man in it. Now let's move to the YR16. It's more of a traditional orange. I don't know how much of this I'm going to use because I don't want him looking too orangey. I want him to. Do want to have more of a kind of a gritty look, but we can come in with some grays to tamp down this bright oranginess. Someone asked, what's a good way to learn how to do comic book st uh, storytelling art? Uh, it's a great question. It's great that you're interested in doing that. I can only speak from my experience. And I grew up as a kid in the 1980s. We didn't have the internet as a resource at that time. Uh, so I learned by just looking at my favorite comic books and studying how those were done. And then just kind of, I just made my own for fun. I did also then, when I got a little bit older, I was able to access, now I'm going to use some YR12, a uh, very light shade of orange to finish it out here. Um, I did get the How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way uh, by Stan Lee and John Buscema. That's a very popular book. Almost every pro I know has has that book or had that book, book when they were starting out. It's a really, it's a classic resource. So most any How to Draw Comics uh, instructional book will give you the basics that you can uh, get you started uh, to start to develop your storytelling abilities, your visual storytelling abilities especially. I don't think it really spoke on how to write comics, though there are those books out there as well. One written by my 
great friend and Young Justice co-collaborator Peter David. He even mentions me in his book, which was a real honor. So if you're looking to write comics, you, won't, you might want to check that one out. Peter David is a comic book writing legend, as well as novels, TV shows, etc. So that takes care of the oranges for him, and that's I'm really digging how that's how that's coming together. Let's see. So he's kind of got a bluish gray leather jacket. So we're going to take full advantage of that. So I'm going to start with some B97. It's kind of a muted blue. Don't want anything too bright. If you only have bright blue, totally cool. Go with it. Run with it. Have fun with it. But if you have a grayish blue, kind of like this one, give that one a whirl. B95 is coming up next. And use whatever tools you have. Like I said at the top of the show, if you just tuned in, I encourage you to use whatever tools you have, draw on whatever art appropriate paper you have, whether that be notebook paper, post-it notes, sketchbook. It's all good. Let's bring on some red in here. Gonna start with some R24. And then bring a little R25. Or no, I'm sorry, R27, R27. For the hardcore Copic people out there. And the same red goes in, we'll just use this in that circuitry in his mouth. Now let's uh, bring in some, we're gonna do that. The, uh, his, his shoulder pads are kind of this whitish silver. So I'm gonna do my uh, white pencil trick. Gonna put in some dark, very dark gray. Darker than what I'd use if it was white paper because this is a, a gray post-it note. So I'm gonna work a little darker with my gray because I want it to have a, a light, um, a lighter gray sort of look. So I have to start darker because I'm gonna color over, color over this with white pencil. Long time viewers know my trick that I'm about to do here. If you're a first time viewer, you're gonna see it come to life here. Yeah, drop a little, forgot to hit these parts with a little bit of that light YR12. All right, now I can take my white pencil. Pretty much any white colored pencil will do. I use the Derwent Ink Tents. And now I color over that gray and the gray of the paper and the gray marker. So I'm leaving that little trench right there, dark gray. I'm not coloring over it because I want it to look a little darker than the main outer plates here of his shoulder pads. Do the same for this side. Cool. Now I'm going to bring in some uh, some cool grays for some more realistic shadow. So I'm going to start with a cool gray three, I think. Yeah, cool gray three looks good. Remember how we said the light's coming from kind of this direction, so the shadows go on the opposite side. When we were using the darker colors, same idea here for the gray. So we start dropping this cool gray in. This is a cool gray three, if I didn't mention that before. Dropping in this cool gray can really make, make things look a bit more realistic, especially for a fantasy character here. It just kind of grounds him in a sense of reality. Definitely gritties them up some, quite a bit actually, which is really, really fun to see how these, this gray ink reacts to the orange inks and changes the vibe of that orange. 
He doesn't look quite so citrusy. He doesn't look so much so super bright orange, candy colored orange. Let's come in with a let's come in with a little warm gray five. Let's mix up our grays a little bit here. Dirty up the tech. This is just ex me experimenting here, just kind of doing something I don't often do, just to kind of mix things up. For a, a dirty tech robot, you know, it's a Cliff Steel here has, you know, been through the ringer, probably quite literally. He's been beat up, bashed up, bruised, as bruised as a robot can get. So just kind of putting some little spots of warm gray here to really kind of texture out his, his form here. Let's come in with a little neutral gray too, just to some neutral gray five here. Let's pull some of this neutral gray five through this far side of his, the shadow side of his um, jacket. And uh, now it's time to do the color fade. So I'm gonna do a neutral color fade, neutral gray. So we'll start with a neutral six. Actually, I'm gonna do a gray to color actually work in some colors here, just because I think it kind of can look, give us a little more than just a gray background, especially on a gray thing here. So um, some neutral six to some neutral four. Just kind of just throwing it down there, just throwing down the, the color. And then, um, let's see, I think I'm going to try kind of a turquoise here, some BG34, just to give us a little complimentary, somewhat complimentary color. It's kind of a bluish green. Just kind of color over all that gray to kind of blend it all together to kind of give it this weird kind of bizarre cloudy sky. Then let's come in a little B01, very light shade of blue. To blend all that together down to his shoulder pad. Almost can't see the gray. I don't think there's any part of this except for that right there on the tip of his nose, that is the original gray color of this, uh, this post-it. So let's uh, come in for my finishing move, the Uniball Signo white gel pen. And we're gonna do the outline, it's outline time. Gonna put this, my signature outline around the perimeter of the figure. I think if you look at every post-it note I've ever done, I have a white outline making the character pop off the page. Did it with, the, I think I did it with the first one. I liked it so much I just kept doing it because I really liked how it looked. Gonna use this white pencil here. Gonna put a little highlight right there, a little glow in his eye. It's a very subtle glow there with the white. And now I can come in with my white um, gel pen. 
go right in the center of that to give them some glowy eyes. I think what I was considering bring a white highlight down this part of his collar just so it pops off of his. Um, yeah, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it, y'all. Y'all, gonna put that white highlight outline kind of right down through here. Don't often do this, but sometimes I do it depending on the character, just to uh, convey the depth, if if and when necessary, or I deem it necessary. And today. It's my birthday, so I so deem. I so deem. So let's put my name on here. Got to be very careful not to smudge that white outline. I always like to put my name and the date I did the art on so that when I go back and see it or if I see it on social media or something like that, I can. Uh, this will be posted on my social media accounts. They are listed below. So you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, etc. So today is 0 2 April 2020. Robot Man from Doom Patrol. So much fun. I really had fun drawing that. I have fun drawing all of these, but it's really fun when I get to draw a character I don't often get to draw. Of course, it's also fun to draw characters I get to draw all the time because I love them so much, like Spider-Man, X-Men, things like that. But getting to draw uh, Cliff Steele here, a.k.a. Robot Man, Definitely was a fun treat for today. Um, let's flip the camera around and, and uh, wrap up today's uh, art live stream. All right, how's it going everybody? I hope y'all had fun with that. Let me plug back into the rig here. There we go. Awesome. So I hope y'all had fun. I hope you had fun hanging out with me this morning here. We'll have a shot at Cliff up on all my social media. So do stay tuned for that. Probably in the next 30 minutes, I'll have that up. And um, thank you for all the birthday greetings, everybody. Thanks so much. Thanks for hanging out with me on my birthday. It's been a great way for me to celebrate my birthday, especially being stuck here in the house. Um, it's great to spend it with uh, spend it with you or get started with you, I should say. The day has just begun for us here on the West Coast. So thank you so much. So sweet of y'all to wish me a happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you very much here. Uh, I appreciate it. I truly do. And I hope y'all are doing well. I uh, hope you're staying healthy. Hope you're Hopefully you're staying, keeping those hands washed, especially if you go outside the house. Make sure you keep your hands, hands washed as best as possible. And um, yeah, hopefully you're having fun. And uh, be sure to be kind to the people you encounter out there, especially people who are having to work hard in this time, like our postal carriers and, and trash people and delivery people, you know. Just a word of thanks can go a long, long way. And our doctors and, and nurses, thank you for all the hard work you're doing. Hopefully we are able to support you uh, and uh, know that we appreciate all the hard work that everyone's doing and whatever it is that we have to do and can do or are able to do. Thank you so much. So remember to be good to everybody out there, everybody. Um, like Abraham Lincoln said in the the pivotal and, and uh, iconic movie, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, uh, be excellent to each other. So... Um, and then party on, y'all. So uh, it's uh, if you haven't seen Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, treat yourself, uh, gang. That's it for today. I got the I gotta go. Uh, I got some comic book work I gotta do. And um, but I'll see you again tomorrow morning when we draw an outsider from Batman and the Outsiders. Who will it be? Uh, I'll have that um, live stream scheduled later today. I already know who I want to draw. I've already done the research. I'm very excited to draw this character. And um, so. Um, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow at 9 a.m. here at, at my YouTube channel. That's 9 a.m. Pacific. Um, you can check your local listings and subscribe. Subscribe to my channel and set the notifications to alert you when I schedule a live stream. Then you never have to worry about what time I schedule because your, your notifications will let you know. If you like the video, please leave me a thumbs up. Feel free to leave a comment below. And please feel free to share my videos. If you know of anyone who likes art or likes superheroes, um, or likes people that just kind of ramble on and on when they talk, then my videos are perfect for those people in your life. So feel free to share it with them. Appreciate all the support, gang. I'll see you again real soon. I'm Todd Knock. Keep on drawing. Keep having fun. Take care.